Okay, in the, the previously lessons, uh, we talk about the virtual, uh, the theorem of the virtual work and uh, uh, the definition of the virtual uh, displacement. And after that, uh, we analyzed the different type uh, of constraints in general way. I, I see, I, um, give you uh, a little uh, description of uh, the different type of uh, constraints. Okay, now uh, today I want to start uh, with, uh, uh, with a short example of, with a single block, but this is uh, uh, a sort of toy example and it's very important because in this example you can find all the uh, crucial points uh, of, uh, of the application of the theorem of virtual work to uh, the EG block system. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's go. Talk about uh, one uh, use red. one block. And I drawing uh, the one block here. And this block is uh, Touch to dirt, okay, with the lower uh, edges, edge of the block. Uh, the first hypothesis is the block is rigid, okay. Okay. Okay, I draw it. Block. Is, is rigid and uh, the block is uh, subjected to two forces in this case one is uh, the self weight of, uh, uh, of the block located in the center of mass of uh, the block to find okay this point uh, is G okay in green the the self weight okay is a vector P In general, this is, uh, as the professor took uh, you in the first part of the lesson, is the uh, dead load, okay? And the dead load is not proportional, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a data, okay? It's, a, it's a, a data of the problem, okay? If you have a block with, uh, I don't know, stone, uh, a single type of stone, you have the... Um, the density of uh, this uh, type of material, it's possible, it's easy to compute the uh, self weight of the block if you know the uh, geometry of the block. Okay, ah, geometry of the block is in this case, it's very easy, is uh, age and uh, Okay, and after that you have an, an horizontal forces applied to the center of mass of the, uh, the block. And this is the live load. Why this is live? Because it's proportional to uh, a coefficient, okay? The 
is alpha is proportional to the coefficient and proportional to the self weight. In this here, yeah, are two types of loads. We have the dead load. In this case, is the self weight. So. And the live load. Okay. And now I put another hypothesis. Uh, in this case, we consider that the friction is equal to infinity. Okay. What is the if you have an infinity friction coefficient? You do you prevent the uh, the slide? Okay, the only one possible mechanism is a rotational mechanism. Okay, the hypothesis is friction is equal to infinity. Sliding. Okay, the life load depends on the coefficient alpha. In general, uh, this coefficient, the name of this coefficient in literature and uh, in, uh, in discourses, is uh, a load multiplier. Okay, alpha is. Load okay. Okay, now uh, I put a sort of uh, another hypothesis that is strictly related to the collapse mechanism. Okay, I consider that you have uh, an inches located in the lower left corner of the block here. Ah, sorry. Okay, if the left load is uh, horizontal in direction is left, what is the, uh, the motion, the possible deformation of the blocks is a, a rotation around rotation contact around the hinge located in uh, the name is this uh, a no because uh, for in english is deformation is uh, the movement or the strain is the deformation of the blocks uh, change different uh, uh, words uh, in, in Italian, deformation, uh, deformazione, where is uh, when you have uh, uh, yeah, in deformation, uh, deformazione is strain, uh, the translation in. Uh, Ah, no stress. Ah, okay. No strain. No strain. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, now I want to... Uh, I'm drawing the... Possible collapse. Yellow is this, it's not beautiful.
is this one. Okay. Okay, now I want to study this simple example uh, using the theorem of the mm -hmm. virtual work. Okay. For this reason, I throw in this one. Okay, this one. Here. And to use blue. No, that is all I want to. Okay. Mm. Mm. This uh, mechanism is, is characterized by only one um, unknown, that is the, the value of, of uh, the uh, rotation. Yeah, I name this rotation theta. Okay. No. Okay, remember that uh, uh, we consider uh, infinitesimal displacement in the sense that the displacement uh, are very, very small, okay? Um, and for this reason, the, uh, the displacement of... Uh, of the components of the displacement, but in general, the displacement of uh, the block is linear. Okay. So. Um, dodici, dodici, undici o dodici. Primo piano, yes. First floor. Okay. This is uh, a key point. Uh, the uh, the small displacement, okay? Okay, if you want, and then this, uh, uh, in all uh, example, uh, the idea is to draw in the, the components of the displacement in all points of the block or, or the blocks. Uh, the system of the block, uh, the components of the displacement of all points, but the components in horizontal and vertical. Uh, why? Because uh, in general, we have uh, uh, vertical and horizontal uh, forces. Because I want to uh, remember, I want to notice that uh, uh, now I want to perform, uh, I want to compute the, the virtual work of the forces and the virtual work, uh, the work in general of, of forces is the scalar product between the force and the relative displacement, okay? But if you have, uh, I don't know, for instance, uh, vertical forces, uh, the vertical forces works only for the vertical components of the displacement. In this way, uh, it's possible to uh, simplify the, the equation, uh, removing the scalar product and using only the products between the length of uh, the vector. Okay. 
in this case it's uh, very easy because in the point uh, a the value of the displacement horizontal or vertical is equal to zero because you have an inch and the inch uh, what is the effect of the inch in the kinematical sense is uh, if you have an inch located in a point the value of the displacement in this point is equal to zero and for this reason if you i want to draw in the horizontal or the vertical displacement start to zero uh, in the inch okay and the displacement is linear and depends to the value of the uh, rotational angle theta okay in this case we have uh, this one okay if you want uh, i put some arrow in order to specify that is a uh, uh, displacement field right? okay and the same for vertical is linear starting from zero uh, so this is a projection of a in the horizontal line is uh, when you have a you have zero after that is linear okay it's very very easy okay I, I put that here this is theta it's the same theta this is theta okay and uh, okay now it's possible to write the virtual work for this reason i put before the l I use l i remember that i use l uh, instead to w because in italian work is lavoro I start from l uh, and delta identify that it is a virtual work it's not a true work okay because remember that um, in another way you apply to the structure uh, a virtual displacement compatible to the constraint such as in this case okay uh, or in other words delta i don't know what is delta delta is a, is a value but is a value not equal to zero but i don't know what is okay but i know that this is very very small <laughs> okay and okay now we have two only two forces okay what is the work of these two forces is uh, p uh, scalar product to uh, the virtual displacement of the point uh, in, in which the forces are applied in this case is g okay for the delta u i put uh, g here plus uh, okay the horizontal forces is uh, alpha p scalar product with delta u g okay uh, okay uh, now in order to continue the the computation uh, I put a name uh, uh, put some name about the components of the displacement and so on and in particular I used the um, W for the horizontal displacement okay i use w for the horizontal mm. displacement and use uh, v for the vertical displacement okay 
if you want to use the definition, uh, I forgot to put uh, uh, the local uh, system uh, reference system, and I use the standard. In this case, I use uh, uh, okay for the vertical. This is the system. Okay, I have uh, A1 is the horizontal, uh, uh, not component, but the horizontal uh, axis, and A2 is the uh, vertical axis. Okay, in this way, it's possible to define using the uh, scalar product uh, the components W and V. Okay, and what is, uh, in other words, uh, the W is equal to u scalar product to a1 okay it's the projection of u along the uh, the axis a1 and the same for the vertical okay this is the definition of components of a vector okay using the definition of a scalar product <laughs> Uh, okay, or if you want, it's possible to uh, uh, write in another way the vector u. Okay, u in this case is uh, w a one plus v a two. Okay, the components. Okay. <laughs> this long story in order to explain what is W, what is V. There are only one of the components, it's very easy. Um, okay, uh, and now in order to perform the scalar product of, uh, of these two terms, uh, okay, now I'm, I use, uh, uh, in this case, P, is a uh, uh, 2D vector with two components and uh, the first one com the first component is equal to uh, zero and the other one is uh, uh, the length of p it is the value of uh, the self weight i remember that i use the t the capital t is the transpose okay because in general the vector uh, is right is written in columns okay uh, not in row uh, okay after that uh, I prefer to use uh, rename uh, this one uh, age why because age It's a vector, it's not vertical, but it's horizontal, okay? Depends to the vector P, but in another direction, okay? Uh, and in this case, age, the vector age, the horizontal forces is alpha uh, norm of P, uh, that is the length of uh, the vector P, zero. Okay, and now I check the uh, if the components are negative or positive because uh, this is the uh, my uh, system uh, reference system and this one uh, if I have a forces for instance horizontal in the right direction for me it's positive okay for this reason in this case you have uh, that the p of a component is negative and the second component is negative and the same for h okay the first component is negative okay because alpha is uh, is a number okay remember that alpha is a real number okay alpha is is a value is a real number okay in general, we take this positive, okay, and uh, 
If not, it's possible to have a negative value in a special case, for instance, when you, in the last, last, next lesson, we talk about uh, the Maschioni mechanism, it's possible to have a collapse, uh, uh, sorry, the, a load multiplier negative. But this is simply that uh, the structure is, is unsafe in the sense that uh, uh, if you put the uh, forces uh, uh, vertical, uh, no, you change the direction, you put a force uh, in the upper uh, in order to uh, maintain the system uh, safe. Um, okay, and the other one uh, ingredient of uh, the, this formula is uh, the vector delta ug, but uh, delta ug is equal to uh, minus delta w g and delta v g. Okay, why the first component is negative and the second one component is positive? Because the what is the um, delta WG and uh, delta VG in the graph uh, that I drawing uh, here? Okay. Uh, don't use uh, the uh, the format shape of uh, of the system, okay? And why? Because uh, the in hypothesis is a small displacement, very small displacement. In this way, is the same hypothesis that you use when you perform an equilibrium of a beam, for example, in which you confuse the deformed shape and the format shape, okay? Because you have small displacement, okay? And for this reason, okay, uh, it's easy to uh, graphically uh, show what is the uh, delta WG and delta VG. They are, G is this point. Uh, this vector is delta WG. Ah, it's a component, no. And the direction of this vector is horizontal. Oh, direction is on the left. And this is negative in uh, our convention. Okay, the same for the vertical displacement. Okay, uh, this one, this little uh, vector, but this is positive. Okay, this is delta v g. Okay. Okay, now I perform the, the scalar product, okay? And uh, I perform the scalar product, but between, uh, before starting the, this calculation, I want to remember that I want to uh, find what is the limit state of uh, the, what is the value of age that provocate the collapse, or what is the uh, minimum uh, value of age uh, that start the, uh, the collapse mechanism. Um, and for this reason, uh, you put uh, what is the solution is equal, what is the value of the, the, the internal virtual work is equal to zero, okay? What is the solution of this problem is delta L equal to zero for all delta U compatible with the constraint, not equal to zero. Okay. Uh, I put this uh, for all delta u, I want to repeat uh, in all exercise because it's a key point because uh, after that it's not possible to simplify the, your computation. Okay. Uh, okay, now I, I perform this one, okay. And 
and it's easy because uh, delta L is equal to uh, you have z for the, the first scalar product is uh, uh, zero multiplied the first component of p multiplied the first component of delta ug that is uh, minus delta wg okay i put this multiplied by minus delta wg plus um, the second component of the vector p that is uh, minus uh, p multiplied by delta vg okay and this is the first uh, scalar product after that plus starting the first the second part you have the first component of age that is minus uh, alpha normal p multiplied by the first component of delta wg that is uh, minus delta wg plus um, the second component of age that is zero multiplied by delta uh, vertical components of the displacement in g okay this is, uh, is P scalar product to delta WG. And the last part is H multiplied by delta WG. And all is equal to zero. Okay. Okay. Now it's easy to see that. Uh, and this is equal to zero because if multiply by zero, this is vanish, this one vanish, and you have only minus normal P delta VG plus alpha normal P delta WG equal to zero. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, right, it's possible to simplify the normal p because it's uh, the self weight of uh, the block. Okay. It, it this is not equal to zero. <laughs> we have minus delta g plus alpha delta wg equal to zero but now uh, it's possible to write uh, um, um, an equation in which you have uh, uh, the components of uh, of the uh, of the displacement and uh, some parts of the geometry of the blocks and the unknown theta. This is not a true unknown, okay? Now it's unknown, okay? In particular, delta WG uh, is equal to theta multiplied by B divided by 2, okay? Why? Because uh, I want to draw in a little bit this, uh, this one. Okay. This is theta. And this is uh, delta W. Oh, sorry. Uh, I use uh, delta VG. Uh, because delta VG is more or less the same. Uh, Sorry, I 
No, this is H. And this is delta Vg is theta E divided by 2. Okay. This is delta Vg. Okay. But the same for delta W. Okay. Okay. This distance is equal to uh, B divided by 2. Okay. okay. This is a triangular uh, with uh, one uh, angle is equal to 90 degrees. It's possible to apply it. Uh, <laughs> the standard uh, trigonometric uh, equation. Uh, in particular, um, in this case, you have, uh, if you want delta, delta Vg is equal to uh, B divided by two tangent uh, of the angle theta. But if, uh, theta is very, 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 very small. Uh, tangent of theta is more or less theta, okay? And for this reason, this is uh, theta b divided by 2. Okay, the same for uh, the horizontal displacement, okay? It's a linearized uh, formula for the, uh, the displacement. Okay. And now I put these two, uh, two equations into my uh, main equation. And this way I have uh, minus uh, delta of g is uh, minus theta b divided by 2 plus alpha theta h divided by 2 equal to 0. This is valid for all theta not equal to zero, okay? Okay, now it's possible to simplify theta. And you can find that alpha is uh, B divided by H, okay? The uh, collapse uh, uh, sorry, the load multiplier is depends only to the geometry of uh, uh, of the block, and and um, in other words, or um, if you want to specify more uh, this definition, alpha defines the limit equilibrium condition. Okay. The, uh, the condition alpha equal to b divided by h defines the limit equilibrium condition. What I mean, if uh, alpha is minus to b divided by h, you have uh, an equilibrium, okay? Uh, you put a forces horizontal, but the blocks remain uh, fixed, okay? Okay, you have, you have equilibrium. If alpha is exactly equal to b divided by h, you have the, uh, the limit state, okay? After that, if you have alpha measured to uh, B divided by H, uh, the blocks rotate around the point A, and you have the collapse of uh, this simple structure. In this case, you have overturning, okay, of the block. Okay, in this simple example, you have only <laughs> key point of the work in the sense you have uh, the different type of uh, 
a load applied to the structure. Uh, we have apl the application of uh, uh, the concept of the virtual world to a system of rigid blocks. And after that, we have the um, what is the um, the sense of uh, alpha. <laughs> That is the uh, collapse load, okay? Or I mean, oh, this is the co um, load multiplier. It's just um, ah, another one. Another observation is related to the uh, the constraint in the sense that uh, here we have a, a unilateral constraint. And this is important to perform this uh, type of uh, uh, calculation, okay? Because uh, if you have an inch uh, located in A, imagine that you put uh, a, a rotation around uh, A clockwise. I know it's not possible because the age, the lower age, uh, can penetrate the earth, <laughs> no, it's the soil. It's not possible, okay? But it's possible to apply a rotation counterclockwise without any reaction, okay? And this is uh, another key point. Okay, but if uh, I don't uh, show you uh, if I put uh, horizontal forces in direction, uh, in the right direction with uh, an inches uh, located in the lower right uh, uh, corner, such as here, because it's the same, it's perfectly the same, and the, uh, the value of the load multiplier is exactly the same. But now I want to use the same example, uh, removing uh, one hypothesis. And what is what I want to remove? I want to remove the, uh, the infinity, uh, that friction coefficient is equal to infinity, okay? I want to remove this one. What a core if you, if you have a, a finite uh, friction. In this case, we have a possibility uh, to, to slide in, okay? Ah, no, sorry. Uh, before using uh, uh, finite uh, friction coefficient, uh, what, what is the solution if you have smooth constraint? If you have smooth constraint, the friction coefficient is exactly equal to zero. What is the value of alpha? <laughs> okay. Okay, if you have a smooth constraint, constraint. Yeah. the friction coefficient on core is equal to zero. Uh, in this case, uh, if you put uh, you have a block, okay, subjected to the self weight P and to horizontal forces, but the horizontal force is the same, is proportional to the self weight, blah blah blah. And the blocks are sliding, perfectly sliding, okay? And the, uh, I don't know, the format shape is this. If I name this is delta, and I use another, use the, um, Delta U, well, in order to don't use delta, because in this case, delta, uh, for me, it's a displacement, not delta virtual, okay? Uh, what is the 
graph, you have only one, you have a vertical displacement? No, because uh, perfectly sliding, horizontal, you have a perfectly horizontal slide. Uh, but the components, horizontal components, is, is constant. And perfectly, like this one. Equal to delta u. Okay. If you compute uh, the 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 work of the forces, you have for all value of uh, delta u, and the work of the forces is measured to zero. You don't have uh, you don't have an equilibrium, okay. For all delta u equal to zero, and what is the solution? Is for all alpha not equal to zero. Or we have no equilibrium. Okay, now I want to study the, the, <laughs> the third case. In this case, the, th the friction uh, is, uh, is equal to uh, a finite value. Okay, a finite value. And this is the case, if you remember, the, in the definition of different type of constraints is the friction constraint, okay? It's defined as a friction constraint. Hmm. And this is uh, sliding mechanism. Okay, I remember that in, in all cases I use, uh, as a friction, I use uh, the definition of Coulomb, is a Coulomb friction, okay? Okay. This is uh, more or less the same of the previous one, but in this case, uh, the constraints are able to express an horizontal forces, okay? And this is the, the main difference, okay? You have this is P and this is H. And if you want to have uh, here, uh, use uh, blue. Another force is equal to P. Okay, you know the two uh, have the vertical equilibrium. And I have another force is horizontal uh, equal to P um, tangent of phi. to use the norm of P instead. Okay, and tangent phi is uh, the, uh, the, fri the, the phi is the uh, friction angle, okay? And tangent of phi is the, uh, the value of the friction coefficient, okay? Okay, the deformation, uh, if you impose a... Uh, uh, a displacement in this case is the same on the previous one. It's an horizontal displacement, uh, constant, uh, only constant, uh, vertical constant. Uh, the format shape is the same uh, as this one. Okay. We have only horizontal forces, uh, horizontal displacement. 
sorry a equal to I use delta u the same okay okay now if you compute the work of the forces of the external forces you have that the uh, age work to the displacement delta u okay but age remember that age is equal to alpha the component the horizontal components of age this is the only one uh, not equal to zero is equal to alpha norm of uh, p alpha of p multiplied by delta u minus because uh, now I want to perform the scalar product between these forces and the relative displacement that is this one. You don't have the same direction and the uh, scalar product is negative. You have F and is norm of P tangent of phi delta U equal to zero for all delta U not equal to zero. What is the solution? The solution is this. Alpha is equal, perfectly equal to the friction coefficient. Ah, sorry. Okay. And now the big question is, what is the expected uh, mechanism if you have uh, a, a friction coefficient find the friction fraction find the friction okay the big question is what is the expected mechanism And if you have, if you define what is the expected mechanism, it's possible to define what is the the collapse multiplier. In this case, it's a collapse multiplier. Okay. And what is uh, is the minimum alpha? Okay. Okay. In this case, quindi the uh, collapse multiplier, I put uh, C. Uh, as an index of alpha in order to have a different differentiate the uh, alpha the general alpha and the collapse multiplier is the minimum in this case between uh, b divided by h that is the um, collapse load associated to a, a rotational mechanism and tangent of phi, that is the uh, collapse, uh, uh, sorry, load multiplier related to the sliding mechanism. In particular, uh, it's possible to uh, comparing these two value, we have two, two situation, two main situation, I have a third situation, but I mean two Two main situation are this one. Okay, A. Okay, four. Tangent of phi minus two B divided by H. You have slided. B. Four. Tangent of phi measure to b divided by h, you have over two. And the third case is not a beautiful case in the sense that if you have tangent of phi equal to b divided by h. Uh, we are not able to decide because the two values are equal. And we have a singularity. Uh, it's not possible to decide what is the uh, the collapse mechanism. Okay. Mm. 
Tu ja was się ulacie. Hmm. It is not possible to decide. Okay. And uh, with this example, I finish the, the first part because now I want to speak about, and in this case, it's very easy because it's only one block. So it's a very simple example. But if you have uh, an assemblage of block, what is the, uh, uh, the the solution of the problem in the sense that what is uh, the possible what are the possible collapse mechanism what are uh, the uh, collapse uh, multiplier uh, and for this reason uh, it's important to um, to introduce uh, uh, two uh, important theorem and after that uh, uh, study two other simple example of assemblage of block but before starting this part uh, uh, i want to define what is the uh, what is the definition or a mathematician definition of the uh, rigid body motion. We will talk about uh, oh, blocks are rigid, uh, blah blah blah. Rigid body motion. Uh, what is the what, when the uh, when if you have a uh, 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 blocks uh, only one blocks, it's possible to uh, talk about uh, speak about uh, rigid body motion. Okay. Uh, at home, it's everything okay? Do you have any question about the first part? Uh, it's clear? Give me a feedback, please. Don't worry. No feedback. All the people at home sleeping? Yes, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, rigid body motion. Uh, okay, imagine that you have a, a body. In general, uh, when you want to draw in a general uh, body, you, you can draw uh, a tomato, <laughs> a sort of tomato. Okay, and this is a uh, uh, the the body in the uh, undeformed shape, okay. In general, uh, it is associated in a sort of line of time. It's a sort of uh, a collection of instant in time of the motion of uh, of the body. And uh, in general, use C zero in order to indicate that uh, uh, capital C. At zero in order to indicate this is the underformed shape okay, of uh, of the body, and uh, we take uh, we assume that to have a point here, and I rename this x in the time t zero because it is uh, the first instant of uh, of the motion, and. You have another point here, and it is uh, y. And now I want to consider the vector of the distance between these two points. And 
is this. And after that, after some, some time, so the, the body moves, uh, you have the body comes here. Okay. And this is C at a certain instant of time t. After that, we have another one. C one. Because I want to consider uh, the time is in uh, a range between T0 and T1. Okay. If you want, uh, T1 is the final instant of the movement of, uh, of, uh, of the body. Okay. But in all instant, you have, okay, it's in black. This is x at the time t, and this is y at the time t, and this is the and the distance between these two points, and the same for all uh, all instant. Uh, x uh, t one y one and this is the vector okay okay what is the definition of g1 if for all instant of time if you have for all couple of points x and y the distance between these two points remains constant this is the definition okay Okay, if for all x and y in the body, okay, yeah. and uh, t is in the range of, oh, well, T0 and T1, if the distance between, uh, no, yt is the same, but yt minus x t equal to a constant. Okay, for all the instant of t, okay, the length remains the same. Uh, or in other words, uh, the length between uh, two points do not vary during the body motion. Okay, but remember, don't forget to, uh, this uh, definition is for all points of the body. Okay, it's very strong. <laughs> Uh, equation. Okay, and this is the definition of uh, uh, rigid body motion. Uh, now, I don't want to stress uh, you uh, about uh, the uh, rigid body motion in 3D because it's uh, very boring and it's not useful for uh, this course because uh, all the competition by end that you will perform for your uh, for your exercises and for your case study are in general in 2D and for this reason I want to talk about only the 2D case okay uh, and I want to uh, underline again that the uh, all, uh, all the definition uh, are in 
uh, infinitesimal displacement or small displacement, okay, very, very small. Uh, I want to recall the, the first, the most important equation that you, I used this in the first lesson, if I don't uh, uh, forget. Um, that is the equation that uh, associates the, the displacement of a point with uh, a displacement of another point and plus another part. Okay, what is this equation? Imagine that you have, a, a, first of all, you have a system that is the same, is A1, A2, okay, and you have a body. Okay, this is region. Uh, consider uh, me drawing a big, a big potato. Okay. Consider a point uh, here. I rename this P, and uh, another point here that is Q. Okay. Now I draw in this line. And this is uh, 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 C zero. Okay, this is the undeformed shape. And in the, another instant of time, the body is uh, here. I mean, remember that the body. Uh, the potato is rigid, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, the location of uh, F, uh, in, uh, in the instant t, this is the uh, c at distant time t. Uh, you have uh, p is, uh, goes here, p prime, and q, uh, yeah. q prime. And now I want to just a little uh, recall that the difference between uh, P prime and P is the displacement of uh, UP, okay? Is the displacement of the point P, is this one. This is UP, okay? Okay, what is the, the most important question? It's this one. Okay, it's possible to uh, define the um, displacement of the point Q using the displacement of the point P in this way. U of Q is equal to U of the point P, okay, plus theta q minus p okay remember that uh, in the second part uh, this guy uh, you have uh, in 43g you have uh, also for the 2d but you have the the vector product okay in this way, in, for the 2D, uh, it's a simple, uh, it's a simple product, okay? Uh, because you have only one uh, rotation uh, around an axis orthogonal to the plane defined by the direction A1 and 2, okay? Uh, and what is theta in this case? If you want theta in this case, uh, is this. Okay. Okay, what, what is the, uh, uh, the solution? Okay, what is uh, the ingredient of this formula? It's possible to define the displacement of a point uh, as a sum of 
a translation plus a rotation. Okay, because here we have uh, the translation. This point, refer, this part refers to the rotation. And apparently it's very, very easy, but existing a lot of <laughs> theorem <laughs> to better uh, highlight this, uh, uh, this part. And, um, and the first one, or one of the most important, is the theorem of uh, Shasless. Uh, and now I want to uh, introduce this theorem and uh, another mm, theorem related to uh, this one. Um, but before uh, starting, I want to uh, underline that in general, uh, all this theorem uh, speak, talk about uh, uh, the movement and the description of the movement uh, is uh, in terms of uh, the velocity field or the acceleration, uh, whatever you want. In general, it, uh, it's possible to define uh, the movement using the, the velocity field of, uh, of the body. For this reason, in general, if you take a book, if you find uh, all these formula are in terms of velocity. But if you are in the uh, small displacement, uh, the uh, direction of the uh, displacement of a point is equal to the direction of the velocity. And for this reason, it's possible to use the same formula for, uh, for us for the, um, for the displacement, okay? This is in 2D is valid for only, uh, for example, this one is valid for the, uh, for the velocity. The velocity of the point Q is equal to the velocity of point P plus the angular velocity. <laughs> in this case, we don't have a rotation, but we have the, uh, the angular velocity is the uh, derivative of the angle respect to the time, okay? Uh, multiplied by the distance between the, uh, the two points, because this is one, this is one. Um, and the angular velocity is, uh, I don't know if you want a simple example, uh, when you are in your, uh, in our car, uh, you look the <laughs> the tachymeter in which you have the RPM, is the number of rotation of uh, in one minute, or I don't know, in general, one minute. <laughs> uh, in one minute of your of the engine of the uh, of the car. Okay, this is the uh, angular uh, uh, angular velocity. Uh, okay, let me talk about these two theorem, and after that, uh, I have two examples that is the application of these two theorem. Okay. Uh, why I, I want to stress with other two theorems? Because uh, it are essential for uh, better understand the, uh, the example in which you have uh, a lot of blocks. Not very a lot of blocks because uh, between by end, uh, end blocks, uh, we, we have uh, 1,000 of blocks, uh, probably you became crazy. Uh, <laughs> if you have uh, three blocks, uh, no, it's not easy to uh, perform the computation without using this uh, concept uh, because these two theories introduce the concept of um, uh, distant the center of instantaneous rotation. Okay, for the single block, it's very easy because you have only one uh, instantaneous rotation that is located in the inches. Okay. But if you have an assemblage block, what is the instantaneous uh, rotation of, uh, of uh, the N blocks located in the, in the space? Uh, and looking this uh, formula is easy to understand if you, if you put, if you find a 
special point in which the displacement of this point is equal to zero, this part vanish and the displacement depends only is only a rotational displacement, okay? And depends only on the value of the rotational angle. And this is the key point. Okay, let me uh, write this. Okay, this is the theorem of uh, Charles. I don't know what is the it's a French guy. Is not the uh, the good uh, pronunciation. Uh, Charles is, lives in this year. 80, 80, 80. Okay. This is the period that uh, you perform this uh, theorem. And uh, what is the theorem? The theorem is this. Uh, whatever body motion that you have, the normals to the trajectories describe described by uh, the points pass through the center of instantaneous rotation, okay? Or existing a special point in which all uh, the velocity field, uh, the distance between this, the point that you locate the, if you take a point, uh, you, take the uh, orthogonal, uh, the distance orthogonal to these vectors pass exactly to this special point for all points, okay? If you want to, uh, is the, when I speak uh, before, uh, uh, the uh, movement is only a rotational movement, okay? All right if you are located in this special point, okay? Whatever. Body motion. The normals to the trajectories described by the points. By the points of the body of the body pass through the center of is the hmm. is the, the, the O's okay mm, what I mean imagine that you have uh, a to the body Uh, immersed uh, in a plane. I name this plane uh, Y. And if you want, I put the, the reference system is A1, A2. Okay. The plane defined by the, these two direction. Okay. And if you have uh, for instance, a, 
a point here and uh, this is the velocity of this point remember that i talk about velocity because the the theorem is defined in terms of the velocity but for hours is the same for the displacement okay okay we have this one and uh, it's not easy to drawing uh, existing in a special point for instance this one see which all the vector fields are orthogonal this one this one and this is orthogonal now if i take another vectors of the velocity of this situation and this is torn is i don't know why And the same, if I take another point, Okay, what is the consequence of uh, this theorem? If you have, uh, if you want to, if you describe the motion uh, in a system where the origin is located in point C, the motion is only a rotation around the C. And uh, uh, a consequence of, uh, of this theorem or uh, the demonstration of this theorem used directly this, this formula. And one of the consequences of this theorem and this uh, uh, definition of, uh, of, the, uh, of the displacement is uh, another theorem, is the theorem of uh, Eulero. And the enunciator is uh, uh, IG body, IG body motion in 2D is or translatory or a rotation around an axis orthogonal to uh, the plane, in this case, P. Okay? The axis is not easy to draw, but it's perfectly orthogonal to the plane defined by the axis A1, A2, okay? Oh, I'm writing here this other theorem. The theorem of... Anyway, oh. A rigid body motion into D yeah. is a slightly or rotation. around an axis orthogonal to the plane uh, and this axis rotation to uh, rotation around an axis or turn to the plane and this axis pass exactly to the point C okay that is the instantaneous uh, 
this is the center of the instantaneous rotation, okay? Okay, uh, in my notes that I shared with you after the lesson, you can find a drawing 3D in order to better understand what is this axis and so on. But uh, focusing with this new term is now easy to uh, uh, restudy the, the single block in the sense that if you have, imagine that you have uh, this block, and this block rotated around this point, okay? okay. What are the, the velocity field of the uh, corner of the block or what are the, the displacement uh, field of this uh, uh, of the vertex of uh, this uh, uh, block okay for instance for this one uh, the vector is this because it's orthogonal use the, this property to drawing the displacement this one is this it's easy and for this one okay if you put the line that uh, conjunction the, the vertex with the point c the displacement is orthogonal to this line and for this reason displacement is, is this okay now it's possible to drawing the the form the shape of this one. The box is this. Okay. Okay. Uh, now give me another 30 minutes to uh to introduce uh, uh, to use this concept to a uh, system of two system of blocks okay use two system. The, the first one is uh, a two body okay and I remember this property one. In this case, you have uh, two, two body, and these two body are attached with uh, an internal hinge here. And fixed uh, to the earth or to <laughs> Uh, the soil with the other two inch. One is here, for instance, another one is here. Oh, it's easy to uh, understand that the, if I name this, uh, this is a C1. This is C2. Uh, the location of the inches, uh, uh, this inch is located here. And we have an uh, inch, I name this inch C1, C1, and the other one is C2, okay? And this inches is uh, C12, okay, the name of the Inches between the two two bodies. Um, it's easy to understand that C one and C two are uh, 
instant uh, center of rotation for the block one and the block two respectively okay and c12 is a, a relative uh, uh, instant of rotation okay and the property one uh, is this if the, these three hinges are aligned the system have possible have a movement okay can have a movement okay okay and what is the movement possible to impose uh, to don't uh, uh, the theorem okay or the theorem of Charles okay if uh, uh, c1 and c2 are the uh, instant center rotation for the block one and for block two uh, the only one displacement uh, is uh, in this direction okay orthogonal to uh, this line and this line and for instance, you have a displacement here, if you have a little displacement here. This deformation, okay? I use, uh, I simplify the drawing using only this, uh, the deformation of this line, okay? And this one, okay? But all the two blocks rotate. Okay, now I want to write the definition. Okay, definition is this. If the centers of rotation C1 and C2 and the relative rotation point C12 are aligned. You can have a rigid body motion If this one is B1, B2, the same reference system, if you want uh, uh, this system have only one uh, kinematical unknown, it is theta. This is theta one, and this, this is theta two. I speak about that you have only one unknown in terms of kinematic way because it's possible to write a relation between theta one and theta two and, and this is easy now okay i want to put some geometry okay if you have this okay, this length is l1 and this one is L2. What are the graph of the the horizontal and vertical displacement? They are K 
Okay, here is equal to zero because here you have an inch and here this inch is an instant center rotation for the body two in this case. After that is linear and this angle is equal to theta two. And the same for the body one, okay? But here, the two body are attached. You have the same horizontal or the vertical displacement because you have the same displacement, okay? Because the condition of uh, the internal hinge is the delta u, that is the different, uh, different uh, the delta of the displacement between uh, in, this point where the uh, the inch is located is equal to zero. Okay, you don't have a relative displacement between uh, the point uh, where the inch is uh, located, and for this reason, uh, it's linear starting from zero. Here we have this. This is theta one. Okay, and this is the representation of the components, components of the displacement. In a one direction, the horizontal direction, okay. The same for uh, the vertical direction, okay? This one. And the graph is more or less the same because this one, depending to the theta one, in the point C12, you have the same displacement as this one. Theta 2. Okay, if I want to use uh, the length L1 and 2, I introduce another angle, but it's not Im properly important. Uh, if I use this angle is, uh, I don't know, is gamma. Uh, this uh, displacement. is equal to theta one L two cosine of gamma. Okay, and L two cosine of gamma R is this distance, okay? Or it's equal to theta two L1 cosine of gamma in function of uh, uh, T2. For this reason, I mean that this is a system of one single degrees of freedom in the sense that the movement depends only between only one angle, okay? Because it's possible to write a, a relation between the two angles. In this case, okay, if I simplify, I obtain that theta one, uh, for instance, is equal to theta two, L one divided by L two. Okay, depends, uh, theta one depends to theta two, uh, product between the ratio between the two uh, distance uh, L one and L two. But the main, this is, um, a main important property because why it's important because um, in general uh, when you want to uh, 
check if uh, this uh, system or general system of blocks uh, want to check if it's, uh, it's fixed in the sense that it's not possible to have uh, movement. Um, we compute the number of uh, degrees of freedom of the single body in the sense that what is the minimum number of the, the, the kinematic parameters that uh, define the movement okay in the plane for a system uh, for, uh, for a rigid body are three because you have two displacement one in the horizontal direction and one in vertical direction and one rotation okay and and the number of the uh, constraints in the sense that what are the number of the uh, kinematical constraints okay in this case you have two bodies and only two bodies have three degrees of freedom okay it's two times three you have six degrees of freedom and how many constraints in the kinematical sense do you have okay the uh, inches have two uh two constraints for uh all inches okay you have three inches you have two times three is six you have the same number of uh, constraints with the same number of degrees of freedom and in this case in general you have uh, um, the structure is uh, uh isostatic okay uh, it's possible to compute uh, the reaction and so on, blah, blah, blah. But in this case, this is a, a necessary condition, but not sufficient condition, because the other condition is to check the kinematic of, uh, uh, of the system. Okay, in this case, uh, this uh, checking, this simple checking falls in the sense that this, this system is labeled, okay? You have movement, okay? In this uh, in this system, okay. In, in the first one, property important property that if you have an uh, three center of rotation aligned, you have a movement. Okay. And the second one is related to uh, not two blocks but three blocks. Okay. Uh, <laughs> increasing of uh, difficulty um, sort of property two if you want uh, I mean, yes and after that I finish for today uh, and in this case we have three blocks okay uh, and between all blocks, we have an inch. Okay, you have a block here. Oh. Body, one body or a block is the same. Okay, one. And you have an inch here. Another block. An inch here. Here you have two inch attached to to the earth. Okay, and now what is the okay? If you want to. Perform the uh, the simple computation. You have a three body with three uh, degrees of freedom. Three dot three is nine. Okay, and how many uh, constraints do you have? Uh, two plus two plus two plus two is uh, uh, eight. Okay, in this case, the number of constraints are minus that the number of degrees of freedom. The structure is sure <laughs> label okay you have a movement okay uh, but the main problem is related to uh in order to drawing the uh the horizontal and vertical displacement of this system of block uh, the main problem is to find 
the uh, instant center rotation of this block. Because for this block, the instant center rotation is clear, this is located here in these hinges, and for the block three, it's located here. Okay? Now, to for find what is the uh, instant center rotation of the blocks, in this case, I rename. Uh, I uh, use uh, this is C1, this is C2, and this is uh, C3. What is the instant center rotation of the blocks two? I use I use the Charles theorem in the sense that uh, imagine that uh, you want to uh, compute uh, the displacement in this point using the block one. Sure, is a vector uh, in this direction. Orthogonal to, and my drawing is not orthogonal. <laughs> okay, I'm drawing this one, the conjunction between the point uh, uh, if you want, I name this is uh, this C1, this is C12, this is C3, and this is C23. The hinges, the name of all hinges. Okay. If you draw in the line between C1 and C12, sure, the displacement of uh, here in the hinges C12 is orthogonal to this line. Okay, for instance, is uh, it's a supposition. Suppose that is this vector. Okay, this two uh, orthogonal. Now I perform the same for the block three. Is this and I don't know for instance is uh, let me change the position of this one. Yes, this vector is orthogonal and this is C two uh, three. Okay. Now I have two vector of the displacement, okay. It's possible to find the uh, location of uh, the instant center rotation of the box two because these two vectors, uh, displacement vectors, are uh, two displacement vector of yeah of the block one, but also for the block two and or for is in green you have the displacement in this point related to the blocks. Three, but also for the box two. Okay, if you use the definition here, uh, it's possible to uh, uh, in uh, I don't know in red, I change the color. Yeah, and I draw in the orthogonal between this vector, orthogonal line to this vector, and the same the orthogonal line to this vector. This is the point uh, that I mean, the point C, that is the eastern center of the station, or if you want, this is C2 in the sense that is the, the eastern center rotation related to the blocks two, okay? is a fictitious hinges located uh, in the plane. Uh, okay, and now it's easy to um, draw in the... Uh, the displacement field, horizontal, vertical, vertical, horizontal, vertical component of displacement for blocks, because uh, you use the same definition. Okay, I don't know if you want to draw me the displacement, uh, horizontal displacement for the blocks uh, three and two. Okay, I'm drawing a vertical line. After that, okay, I'm starting from here, starting from zero, but the same for the block. Two because this is the eastern center rotation for the blocks. Two. It's this one. 
Okay, in this case, imagine that uh, I put uh, a rotation in this direction, that is theta three, because it's related to the box three. Okay, and remember that here you have an hinges. Okay, but the horizontal or the vertical displacement uh, of the box three is linear, and starting from the point C three. And the angle of the line is exactly the rotation of angle C3. And you have uh, this one. Okay. Here in the point two, three, the two blocks are attached. They have the same displacement. And for this reason, the other parts of the, uh, the drawing is this. Okay. This is, uh, I named this theta 2, and this is uh, theta 3. Ah, sorry, in this case, I put around, it's counterclockwise, counterclockwise, the rotation theta 3, okay, this one. Okay. Attention that that uh, pay attention because now in this graph uh, here you have the horizontal displacement for the blocks two and three, not for the blocks one. Okay, and this is it's more or less the same, but the the angle in this case are different. Okay, or the theta two is the same for, because if now I draw in this one, now if I want to draw in the, the horizontal displacement for the blocks one and blocks two, all the construction is the same. The procedure is the same. Okay. And now I have this one. And this is Theta two, okay. But in this part, you have this one is theta one. And the angle theta one is different to theta three, <laughs> and the same for the distance. This distance is different to this distance because the location of the two inches uh, are different, okay. But reg um, regarding the box two, you know, it's possible to use the horizontal displacement using this graph or this this other graph is the same. Okay. Okay. Regarding the uh, or the vertical displacement, pay attention because the instant center rotation of the blocks. Two is this one, okay. And now I'm going to okay. I start into the blocks, uh, blocks uh, one, okay. The rotation is uh, counterclockwise, and for this reason, is linear as this. Okay, this is theta one. For the block C, same is counterclockwise, and graph is this. Now, the displacement of block two is linear. Okay, it's sure, but uh, in the point, these two points are attached. You have the same displacement here. And uh, here, the displacement is, the vertical displacement is equal to zero, okay? Yeah. Uh, is here is located the, the, the eastern center rotation of, uh, of the block. And for this reason, the graph is linear. Uh,
you have the same line yeah? because uh, this is perfectly aligned <laughs> in my graph is not uh, <laughs> this is not this the case okay and this one is uh, theta 2 or this one is theta 2 is the same okay and this is an, uh, an application of uh, of the Charles theorem uh, with three uh, three blocks uh, if you want uh, write the the proposition too is if you have uh, um, a system like this, if you have uh, two internal hinges, you have a, a possible movement, okay? It's more or less the same. But the key point in this uh, example is not to, uh, for me, it's not important to uh, find if you have or not the movement because it's easy to understand that you have a movement, okay? The key point is find the distance center rotation for the blocks too, because if you have this, it's easy to draw in the, uh, the displacement of, uh, uh, of this block, okay? And this is uh, uh, essential for uh, the next step, because now if you have this drawing, uh, probably you have the self-weight of all blocks and the horizontal uh, forces are proportional to the self-weight, and it's not important, okay? The more important now is locate what is the location of the center of mass of all blocks, okay? After that, we have the, the forces. It's possible to perform the theorem of the virtual world, but it's easy, it's a, a computation. The main important part, uh, if you want, is uh, uh, determine the uh, the components of the displacement. This is the, the main important part. And the other one that in this case is a, it's a, it's a sort of data, it's an input, the position of the hinges. Because why I talk uh, if they are or not the, uh, um, the movement? Because depends of the, the number of blocks and the position of the hinges, okay? But what is, if you have a system of block, the true position of the inch, you have a lot of possibility. And for this reason, in the next, uh, next lesson, we use this uh, uh, framework to study uh, the first uh, simple assemblage of blocks uh, that is a component, it's component by three block, three blocks. And this is the three liton. You have two pillars. Three blocks. Okay, they are with unilateral constraints are here. Sure, we can start with uh, infinite friction coefficient in the sense that all the uh, you have all hinges located. What are the true uh, the position of the hinges? What are I don't know. Depends of uh, the the direction of the uh, horizontal forces. Okay, since so you have this one. This is a sort of preview of uh, the next lessons. And probably one best choice is uh, to put an inch here, here, okay, and here, here. Okay, but this is uh, your choice, okay? Okay, this through the, in this simple, this simple, it's not very simple, but it's simple in the sense that 
if you have an horizontal for all the forces are horizontal in the left direction sure you don't put an inch here because if you have a rotation in this way these edges compenetrate the solid this is not possible for the uh, constraints applied to the structure okay and for this reason the choice is one here one here and after that the other two are located here but now you have a different shape because the blocks have a different shape but it's not important because it's important the location of the hinges but the case is this one probably the same because uh, we, the main problem is to where is the now I studied this we have to put this line this other line and what is the the position the intersection between these two lines define uh, the eastern center rotation of the, the horizontal blocks and here you have two possibilities existing this point or not but uh, just a preview, remember that uh, essentially the, the translation is a rotation in which the uh, eastern, center, eastern center rotation is located to the infinity, okay? The translation is a rotation, <laughs> a sort of rotation, okay? Yeah, it's the same. And for this reason, if you don't have an intersection point, okay, if these two lines are perfectly parallel, the intersection between two line parallels are located into infinity. Okay, what is the solution? Okay, no worry. The blocks, the reason these blocks translate, okay, perfectly translate and don't rotate, okay, but this is related to the um, the choice of the hinges, but uh, for the choice of the hinges is related to the uh, the geometry of the blocks. Okay, so uh, now I want to stop this uh, lesson, and uh, uh, next Monday we perform uh, some example using the detritons. Uh, for computing uh, the uh, collapse, uh, I'm sorry, the load multiplier, because you have a lot of choice, uh, and the minimum of the collapse load is the uh, collapse multiplier. As the professor talked uh, in the first part of the lesson, if you have uh, n, no, n blocks, uh, it's, it's impossible to perform this computation by n because you have a very large range of possibility. And for this reason, you use, uh, in general, you use a, a software especially uh, dedicated to uh, this uh, uh, special uh, topics. Uh, thank you so much. And if you have any, any question or you want uh, some... Uh, some problems do not uh, hesitate to uh, I'm here. I stop the registration this way.